What is the best you have no power here moment you have ever seen? A coworker friend of mine was flying back from a sales conference in Vegas and he was able to upgrade to a first class seat. We had this bitch sales VP that was on the same flight. She was the snobby, entitled type with a full-time nanny and giant McMansion in the suburbs, and she generally treated people who worked for her like servants. She sees him in a first-class seat as she is making her way to coach and asks him how he got that seat. He used points to upgrade. As people are getting settled in, she makes her way back up to the first-class cabin and asks to speak with the lead flight attendant. She tells him that one of her underlings is sitting in first class and that she needs to switch with him since she's higher on the corporate ladder. The guy can't believe what he's hearing, but she won't take no for an answer. Finally, he tells her she has to go back to her seat or she will be escorted from the plane. She made a complete ass of herself in front of the whole first class cabin. Dude, what the hell, man? It still blows my mind every time I read one of these stories and it never fails to baffle me at how these people still exist. I will never understand how a person can show so much disrespect to the people around them, yet demand the most respect from those same people. And obviously, she doesn't deserve the respect. These types of people think that they are respected because people walk on eggshells for them. But in reality, they have false respect in that they simply act like they like you so they don't cause any drama. These are the worst types of leaders. I worked for eight years servicing communications equipment on site. Five of those years were as the department manager. When oil was found in our area, we got so busy we could barely even think. Most of my team were pulling 12 plus hour days, six days a week, and we were struggling to hire people quick enough. One day, the CEO texted and said he hired an assistant manager for me, which was something I desperately needed. I was dirty as heck from my previous job and swung by the store to pick him up and take him to one of our sites where he would be doing paperwork. The moment he got in the truck, he immediately started talking crap. He started telling me about how everything we were doing is effed up and the department manager, which is me, was a total moron and he would have my job within a few months. I just sat and mostly listened. He obviously didn't know crap about my industry and every time he would say something wrong, I would try to politely correct him and he'd either backtrack or insist that I was trained wrong. When we got to the site out in the middle of the West Texas desert, he complained about the layer of dust on everything and ordered me to clean up the entire site. When I sat down at my desk, the guy continued to whine my ear off about everything that was wrong and chastised me for sitting down at my desk when he told me to clean up the site. So I called for a taxi, filled out a notice of termination, and handed it to him. He looked absolutely shocked. Then he defiantly protested that only the CEO could fire him. I said, and me, right? He sheepishly nodded. So I stuck my hand out for a handshake and introduced myself. I can teach anyone how to service equipment, but I don't have a clue how to teach someone to not be an a-hole. It's crazy to think that even once you interview someone extensively, you really still have no idea who they are as a person. Some people are really good at interviews and can tell you exactly what you want to hear to get the job. I remember being hired for a programming job a while back and they legit gave me a whole personality test. It was the Myers-Briggs version, and I'm pretty sure that is used by actual psychologists to determine personality traits. I think that is probably the best way to filter out a-holes, but I'm sure that adds to the cost of hiring someone. When I was working customer service for a restaurant delivery service, not unlike DoorDash, I had a customer send in a complaint about hair in their food. The hair was sitting on top of the food. I checked their account and they had one order on their account, which is a red flag. I check their phone number and find multiple accounts, each having one to two orders, all of them complaining about hair in the food. I deny a refund because the customer has actually used the same identical photo for the last order since they ordered the same thing. The customer tries to argue with me, threatens to never use the service again, typical stuff that they always say. Eventually, the customer gives up and ends the call, then immediately tries again. I get the support request, see who it is, then deny the refund again. She ends the call, then tries again. The person behind me gets the call. I tap the person on the shoulder and show them what I pulled up on my screen, and that person denies the refund. The next day, she calls back and tries again and is outside of the refund window, so the customer demands to speak to a supervisor. The supervisor bans her from the service for multiple fraudulent refund requests. 
Dude, I still can't believe people do this. This is legit stealing and it gets the delivery driver or food worker in trouble or fired. Not cool at all. One of my jobs is in a hotel restaurant bar. A guest came into the bar after having been refused service at our sister hotel down the road. He was very drunk and had been rude, abusive, and threatening to the staff. He insisted we serve him as he was a guest, but we'd already been phoned by our sister hotel so they could let us know what the situation was. We refused but offered him some water and suggested he go up to his room. He then went on about how he had nearly bought our hotel and that he was practically our boss, so we should serve him or he'd have us fired. We refused. He told us he was a very rich man and would tip us hundreds of pounds if we served him. We refused. He was getting abusive at this point, so we again suggested he have some water and head up to his room. He went on to tell us that his brother was the mayor, so we should serve him. We refused and told him he should go on up to his room yet again. He then said he was going to the pub across the street, but all the pubs and restaurants in our town have a barred from one, barred from them all policy. We telephoned the other pubs to inform them of the situation. Many of them got back to us and said they had been offered money, been threatened with losing their jobs, and also told the story of the mayor. All of the pubs stuck to their guns and refused to serve him. Eventually, he came back to the hotel and went to his room. Yeah, drunk people are the worst, especially when you are sober and on the clock. What's even worse than a random drunk person? A random drunk person who thinks they get a free pass for all of their terrible decisions. Freaking assholes, man. One of my new employees came from a competitor who is, shall we say, not as put together as we are. Her former boss had actually called me to yell at me about poaching his consultants, which in and of itself is weird enough. However, a few weeks after she started, the dude rolled up to our office. He had apparently been calling her to get her to finish an analysis for him and she just ghosted him. I went to the lobby to see what the frick he was doing here. He started in on me again and then she happened to walk by. I didn't fully understand the conversation, but at one point he literally demanded she do this analysis. She just said, or what? And waited a few beats before turning on her heels and walking away. I did the old hand on his back, point to the door universal symbol for leave or a large security man will make you leave. Never heard from him again. I had a rough childhood with a drug addict father. My mom struggled to make ends meet, and my first job was paying for the mortgage. After several months of working, again at my first job, I finally had some money to spend on myself and decided to get a computer and a decent internet connection. At the time, it was the best internet I could buy as part of a dish combo package. I bought a dish and brought it home to install on the house. During this time, my dad was still living at home with us, but he was hardly there, and my parents had all but separated at that point. My dad promptly asked me what I was doing putting a dish on his house. I let him know that I pay the mortgage now and I make the decisions on what we do with the house. I was young, but it was a very empowering moment for me. I had an old boss who was a complete and total a-hole. He was actually my boss's boss and wasn't supposed to interact with us unless it was through our boss, but he just loved trying to make everyone under him squirm. The company had forced him to go to training twice because of how he spoke to people. One day, I get a call at home from him and he just starts unloading cursing, name-calling, insulting over some technical issue he just found out about. After a couple of minutes, I just looked at my phone and hung up on him. The next day, I get called into a meeting with his boss, who basically wants to know who the f I think I am hanging up on this guy. I calmly explain that no one gets to yell at me on my time, in my home, on my phone. You have to wait for me to be on the clock to pay me for that privilege, and I'll gladly take that money. If I'm busy being yelled at, I'm not busy with anything else. Seem to work. Stories like this really make me wonder what the underlying psychological issue someone has to have to just have a small amount of power go completely to their head. It reminds me of the military where some higher ranked people are on an absolute power trip and most of the time it's because they had a rough time fitting in in high school. Basically they were teachers, pet types and types that would get made fun of a lot. But most of the people who are bullied in high school tend to make it out and be normal people who do great things. So I feel like it's something else that makes people go crazy with small amounts of power. Maybe trying to fill some kind of void in their life or something like that. Who knows? When I was in high school, I worked at a popular warehouse club selling computers on the weekends. 
I was hired by the store manager via referral of a friend. I loved computers and they thought I'd make a good salesman, so my job was to stay in the computer department and sell computers, nothing else. Well, one of the shift managers didn't like that and started insisting that I needed to go fold clothes for a while, as in half my damn shift. I told him that the store manager had instructed me never to leave the technology department, but he insisted. This went on for several weeks. The store manager showed up one weekend when both the power tripping shift manager and I were working. The store manager walks up with the shift manager close behind. Store manager slaps a stack of green bar paper, this was a while ago, down onto a shelf and points to some highlighted numbers. He looks at the shift manager and says, Do you see this? This is our average technology sales numbers for the weeks you are on shift. See this number over here? This is our average technology sales numbers for weeks you are not. At this point, it would be more cost effective for me to simply fire you. What do you think of that solution? The guy stammers and stutters like a toddler caught bullying another kid on the playground. Fortunately, the dude wasn't fired, but the store manager made it clear that when I was on shift, I was not to leave the technology department unless I was on break or there was a fire in the store. That shift manager never said another word to me. A few years ago, I interviewed for a job in the U.S. that was labeled as a senior level position, which is my level of experience in this field. I go through two phone interviews and a stellar in-person interview. Shortly after the in-person interview, they call me and say they absolutely love me and that I would be a great fit at the company. However, they thought I was a little too green, implying I was inexperienced for the senior level position. But lucky for me, they have an opening for the junior level position at a salary decrease. I kindly told them that the reason I applied to their job posting in the first place was because it was a senior level position and that I wasn't going to take a step backwards in my career by taking a junior level position since I had both the appropriate experience and the work history. I also let them know that trying to trick someone with senior level experience into taking a junior level position by stringing them along through interviews and a job offer was deceptive and unethical. There was silence over the phone for a moment and then the interviewer said in an offended tone, well, we've all had to make sacrifices for this company. To which I replied, you may have had to, but I don't make sacrifices for anyone. Stunned silence. Then the interviewer, who was so appalled that they didn't know what to say, replies, well, maybe you can think about it and I'll call you tomorrow to check in. I said, no thank you and please don't call me, and hung up the phone. They do this a lot to young females, people like myself, in a variety of industries. Don't take crap from anybody, know your qualifications, believe in them, and tell a-holes to F right off. Your talents will be appreciated and paid for elsewhere, I promise you. I work at a hotel. It's high-end, so we often take the approach of just appeasing guests no matter what. So I frequently have to bite my tongue. However, we have a very desirable parking lot, and when people poach it, we boot them. I love enforcing these because I don't have to bite my tongue or apologize as they aren't guests. My favorite one was this. Girl parks and walks to the neighbor hotel. Our manager happens to be in the lot and says, Hey, just FYI, this is parking for our hotel, not the hotel over there. She proceeds to say, F you, flips him off and walks into the neighbor hotel. Manager calls me and tells me. I giggle, grab the boot and slap it on her car. She comes back screaming and ranting. I tell her the cost is $200 and she calls the police. The police ask, is this a private lot? Me. Yes. Police. Okay, then pay them. She refuses to pay and storms off. I get a call requesting the manager. I speak with them and it's the girl's mom. She is trying to say, oh, my daughter didn't know she was there for a job interview. Yada, yada. I let her go on. And when she finally stops making excuses, I tell her that her daughter flipped off the manager and there is no way the boot is coming off without payment. On top of that, I tell her when she pays, she better not come in swearing or yelling or the price goes up to 300. She hangs up. The daughter comes back and silently hands me 200 with a look of rage on her face. I'd never been so internally giggly before in my life. 